There was an idea to review every movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was a grueling undertaking, but I understood what I was doing to myself. Because I realized if I didn't tell you what I thought of all these movies before Endgame came out, you wouldn't know. And now that it's almost here, I know you don't care. Regardless, I still have a job to do. And it's almost finished. Avengers Infinity War dun, bum, bum. So Avengers Infinity War was previously considered to be the culmination, the culmination of all the movies in the MCU heading up to it, all the storytelling, all the character arcs, all of everything that happened was leading to this. But what we got was part one. So now Avengers Endgame is the culmination of all the story arcs and all the character development that's gone into the, into the MCU up until this point. Nevertheless, though, Thanos, the purple chin tyrant, has been on his quest to to collect, I guess, all six Infinity Stones, controlling power, mind, soul, space, time, and reality, and put them into a, a metal uh, oven mitt so that he could snap half the universe away. And it's been taking him quite a long time because he didn't know where all the stones were yet, but, and he realized that if he started, he'd be on a timer, so he waited until he could figure out where the soul stone was, in close enough proximity to finish everything else all at once. However, there's a couple of groups of people called the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy that aren't exactly too keen on letting Thanos do this, but they aren't strong-willed enough to actually get in his way. So they lose. Now, I've wanted to do an analysis on Thanos as a villain for a very long time now, but I feel like there's no point because there's like a hundred of them out there that I've seen. But point is, if you have a character who is willing to throw his daughter off of a precipice, to complete his quest, not even because he wants the power, but because he feels like this is the only way to fix the universe, to save the people from themselves, then regardless of what the other characters are capable of, they're not going to have the will to push past him, basically. Captain America doesn't have what it takes. Iron Man doesn't have what it takes. Doctor Strange doesn't have what it takes. None of the characters are on the same level as far as willpower and willingness to do what it takes to get the job done, as Thanos is. So regardless, they were always going to lose this battle. And then towards the end, when the characters such as Scarlet Witch finally build up the courage to do what's necessary to stop Thanos, it's too late because he's got the time stone and nothing you can do will last very long, but he can just go back to right before you did it and stop you from doing it in the first place. The Avengers did fight valiantly, but seeing as the movie wasn't exactly about them, it was just named after them, they didn't really stand much of a chance. So when it came down to whether or not Thanos was going to snap half the universe away, the answer was a yes before the film even started. Now that's enough gushing about Thanos. I want to give major props to Anthony and Joe Russo for pulling this movie off in such an interesting way, because if I had been in charge of it, there wouldn't have been anywhere close to the character balance that there was. Like, you never really miss any of the characters for too long. Like, sure, it's still about Iron Man this time. I'm sure it's going to be about Captain America coming up in Endgame. But this time, it was a very Iron Man-centric story. And the characters around him were the ones getting the most done. And then Thor shows up in Wakanda with Captain America and the other Avengers. And it's like, oh, 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 oh Thanos is coming. But, honestly, the dynamics between the characters was very interesting. I, for some reason, thought that every character in the MCU was going to be on screen at the same time in this movie. I don't know why. That's a lot of stuff to do all at once. But I also love the way that they balance the third act. Uh, Thor and Stormbreaker, uh, Wakanda and the Outriders, and Titan and Thanos. All that stuff pretty much happening at the same time. And then finishing, finishing, and finishing. I love that stuff so much. It was like a 45-minute third act. It didn't even feel like it. Like, the movie moves at a decent enough speed to where if you're new, you can be like, hey, what's going on? And somebody that's experienced can be like, this is what's going on. But towards the end, it's just like, strap in because we're jumping at light speed. This movie's over. And I also want to give props to them for actually killing off half the characters. And I know people are going to be like, well, they got dusted and the contracts aren't up yet. Of course they're not dead. They're going to be coming back in Endgame. That's not the part that matters. The part that matters is that they were killed off Anyway, and I know it was to trim the fat so that Avengers Endgame could be a more focused up story. I'm not stupid. But the thing is, children were still uh, mortified by watching Spider-Man die. People that aren't exactly in the know, like 
knowing exactly how much money Black Panther made or knowing that certain contracts aren't up or that some characters are disposable, some characters might come back and might not come back. People that don't know that, the casual fan, would be like, Spider-Man and Black Panther just died. Oh my goodness. Like, that's the that's the point of doing it. Not so that people that know everything about the MCU can be like, oh, of course the characters are coming back. And so the people that just enjoy the movies for what they are can be like, yo, is Doctor Strange, like, just dead now? But we will see what is permanent and what's not in a, in a week when Avengers Endgame comes out. And now I only have to review Ant-Man and the Wasp because I haven't seen Captain Marvel and I won't, so I can't review it. Fair? Fair. See you next time. Oh, I didn't even rate this thing. Uh, Avengers Infinity War is... I don't want to say spectabulous. There's a school bus outside of my house or something. Avengers Infinity War is, you know what, it's it's spectabulous. Okay, I'll give it to you. Avengers Infinity War is spectabulous. It's the only Avengers movie so far that's spectabulous, so you better appreciate that for what it is. Um, Next week, Avengers Endgame comes out, and my Ant-Man and the Wasp re-review will be out, and I'll be free. Look in the eye of the violent and villainous. We are the murderous militants. We are the pirates that hide on the island and later we wild and marauding and murdering merchantmen. We have been cursed by the curse. We shoot it first on our